All right, today we're gonna to do a video that is a redo of a previous video. We're gonna talk about Roll20 versus Foundry VTT. All right, I've made this video twice before and uh, I wanna do a final comparison of Roll20 and Foundry VTT. I've switched, but I recommend you think about what you want out of your online role-playing tool whether or not it's right for you to switch for Foundry VTT. It's gonna be a very personal decision uh, and I wanna just kind of put out my thoughts knowing that you should do whatever you wanna do. All right, let's get into it. So first off, uh, I've made this video before and in making this video again, I'm actually gonna go and delete some of the most popular videos from my channel. I still get a lot of clicks. Maybe that helps out with the algorithm. I'm not here to be a YouTuber. I'm here just to put out interesting information for people. And some of this information has gotten pretty stale. So I'm gonna go delete the old ones. And this will just be my Foundry versus Roll20 video going forward. And I say that and I do that knowing that no matter what I do, this video is gonna get out of date almost immediately. Because in Foundry, Foundry has modules, these tools do change. So something I say right now may not stay the same forever. So definitely check down in the description below if I say something that just immediately becomes not true, I will post a comment or change something in the description to edit it. YouTube doesn't let you edit your videos after you put them up. Um, so I'm just gonna put any major corrections down in the comments and description below. Um, and, and you know that's the best that I can do, but I wanna make sure that any old content out there that becomes irrelevant or is just wrong um, gets taken off because I don't want to mislead people. So I'm going to delete some of my older videos, which were my older opinions. I know people like seeing the progression of how things change, but I don't want anybody to see something and then take it as an accusation or something that's inaccurate. I, I just, I don't have the energy for it. So I'm going to take it down. So this is like the big table of uh, the different things that have changed over time with these tools here. Let me make this full screen. So this is sort of where I've started at and where I've gotten to in the six months of using this tool. So uh, someone commented before that uh, I just put up like 20s for who kind of won the competition. And someone said, oh, you should put up a one if the person, uh, if the tool really was not good at that instead of a, another icon that I used. So this is what I've done. So, you know, a lot of stuff has changed over time or I've changed my opinion. So I wanted to go through you know, kind of which tool I thought really had some advantages versus which tool had some disadvantages in these areas and simplify it out and kind of talk all the way through it. So let's do that right now. So Roll20, it's business and cost model. The major advantage there is that it's free, right? Roll20 has a free option. You can subscribe to it and you get more features, but it has a totally usable free option that if you want to use D&D or play D&D online and you don't want to spend any money, this is probably the best option for you. The company is mature, it's been around nine years, it's got lots of employees, it's bringing in money, it's doing great. Uh, so it's gonna be around for a while. So if you learn how to use this tool, it's probably gonna be around and hosted in the way that it is now for a long period of time. You'll be able to make use of that time investment because the company's mature, it's not going anywhere. It has a learning curve that is relatively short and there's a lot of content out there like YouTube videos and wikis uh, where if you just wanna learn how to do something in Roll20, you can pretty much just type into Google, how do I do this in Roll20? And you're gonna get a pretty good answer. The game support is good. It's not just D&D and Pathfinder, but uh, you're gonna find pretty good character sheet and system support for just about any tool, you, any game you wanna play in here. And it has a major advantage in that it has relationships with a lot of the first party content creators like Wizards of the Coast and D&D and Pathfinder and Paizo. Um, and you can get a lot of that content just by buying it on the Roll20 Marketplace yourself, which is a massive time saver. Foundry VTT, on the other hand, has a different business and cost model. It's fixed price, which means you pay $50 up front, and that's the last money you ever spend on Foundry VTT to the Foundry VTT company. Uh, it has a massively faster pace of development compared to Roll20. A lot of people criticize Roll20 of stagnating. I am one of those people. Uh, Roll20 has not changed very much since its uh, opening, you know, first versions. So the pace of development, on the other hand, for Foundry VTT, that $50 you're spending, most of that money goes into making Foundry VTT better, or at least that's the experience that we've had because it's gotten so much better in the last year. It also has modules, 
which the community can go and create new features for Foundry VTT, which are re released as modules. And man, some of these modules, they do some pretty amazing things. And it's one of the most fun parts about using this tool is that if there's something you wanna do, you can probably find a module to go do it, or um, you know, maybe you even make that module yourself. So it's kind of an open and extensible in a way that people other than Foundry VTT can create not only content, but also functionality for it and release it either free or paid. Um, I mention this because I'm a huge, huge proponent of playing online role-playing games in isometric. And I think maybe at this point I've earned the right to authoritatively say that uh, Foundry VTT is the best place to play isometric D&D. I think I'm the right person to make that statement. It's the best place to play isometric D&D. And you do that using the Grape Juice Isometrics plugin, which you can get through that Patreon. Also, the big advantage that Foundry VTT has is hosting and performance. Because you are self-hosting, you are not using any shared resources compared to Roll20, which is a shared service and a hosted service that uses a lot of shared technology. Um, so your performance is going to be higher on Foundry VTT, all things created equal about your computer compared to using Roll20. Roll20's online web tech is a little bit less mature than Foundry VTT, but the massive reason that Foundry VTT is faster is because the web server that you're connecting to is only serving up content to the people that are playing that particular game, even if you host it up in the cloud on a server somewhere and hosting provider. Um, it's still one process per game at a time, and that has some immediate advantages over something like Roll20 for your performance and your experience. So as I've used these tools, I've realized that there's a couple of things uh, in Foundry VTT that are done way better and, and, and are worth mentioning, but there's a couple of things that I regret that or I miss out on, or that just after switching, I, I kind of realized that, yeah, that was easier in Roll20, or that was just way better in Roll20. And I think it's worth mentioning those because maybe those are things that are super important to you. So if you're used to Roll20, um, the top surprises I see out of people who are using Roll20 and then switch to Foundry VTT that you might want to think about that might actually even turn into deal breakers for you, even though they didn't for me, is that while Roll20 has a full character builder, it's like an all-in-one experience, Foundry VTT does not have a robust character builder. You can kind of hand enter and type in your character sheet for a game, but it doesn't have something to help you level up. You're totally dependent on exterior tools for that, though those tools are good. Some people want it all in one. They don't want to use any other tools. They don't want an ecosystem of tools. They just want an all in one experience. And there is no equivalent of the character Mancer, which is a Roll20 thing in Foundry VTT. And for some people that's a deal breaker. Also, there's no official D&D content over in Foundry VT VTT. So D&D 5e, the most pop popular role-playing game out there, you're gonna find yourself having to use modules to import it from other places. You're gonna have to find yourself hand typing some of the content. You're gonna have to find yourself hacking a little bit or you know, spending more time to get that D&D content into Foundry VTT. Though I think that's fun, not everybody does. Some people just wanna to go to the marketplace, buy it and have it all done for them. If that's what you want, Roll20 is probably way easier. Um, some things are kind of complex in Foundry VTT and are still sort of like, you know, you gotta be a pro user to understand how to do it. So even simple things like moving content between worlds in Foundry is still pretty complicated. Um, in Foundry VTT, there's sort of a, a cumulative cost that still comes back in. Once you start subscribing to a bunch of Patreons, maybe for some paid modules, um, you know, I said Foundry, was a kind of a fixed cost. That's not entirely true, right? That's not true forever. If uh, you start subscribing to Patreons, you may find that you spend more money on the Patreon community of creators than you ever did on Roll20. Um, and just, you know, just be aware, you gotta watch yourself and know what kind of uh, money contribution you wanna put into your online D&D. I personally found that I'm loving some of the Patreon content, but I went into Foundry thinking it was gonna be way cheaper and, uh, Maybe that didn't turn out to be true for me, but obviously your mileage will vary. 
Also, I think some people are excited to learn Foundry and they hear that other people are self-hosting, but if they've never self-hosted something before, they're surprised to find out that they, they might have to put some work into that port forwarding, learning how to do some tunneling. Um, you know, you can learn some computer skills that will help you out playing any kind of video game from here on out. Um, but it, it might take some, it might surprise you that that, for some people, depending on your internet connection, some, it's not as simple as you think it might be if you've got a internet provider that doesn't provide you a nice, you know, uh, public IP. All right. So the final comparison, looking at it, February 2021, knowing that some of those things might change, you read in the description below. But in general, yeah, Foundry VTT is, in my opinion, better based on my criteria. You might have different criteria. So look at it this way. You should use Roll20 if you want a free experience. If you just want a free experience, there probably isn't a better tool out there than Roll20. If you want the shortest path to a quality online RPG experience, it's hosted out in the cloud by a company that does a good job with that. You can just sign up. You can probably get started pretty quickly. It's, it's probably the best tool if you just want the easiest learning curve and shortest path to a quality online RPG, where you will then be able to go and buy extra content. On the other hand, you should use Foundry if you want to blow away your players with an absolutely amazing experience with all the fog war and lighting and all these advanced modules, all this cool stuff that you can do. If you want to mix and match the tools that you use for mapping, for you know, writing your lore, for uh, you know, using stuff from third party sites like D&D Beyond, right? if, you, if you're that person that doesn't want an all-in-one tool, you want to use the best of, of each tool for each typical thing. I think Foundry with its uh, open ecosystem and lots of interconnections and interoperability is probably the best. If you want a modern high performance experience for this uh, kind of 2D uh, version of playing D&D online, Foundry is the best right now. If you run homebrew and you don't care at all about not being able to buy D&D content, you just kind of create your own world, Foundry VTT is awesome because all the stuff that you, you know, type in and uh, you know enter into Homebrew because you host it yourself, you have that content forever and you can reuse it later. Uh, you can uh, get the advantage of all your prep. Whereas if you did that five years later uh, in Roll20, you may not be able to use that content because you may not be using Roll20 anymore. And then of course, if you're like me and you do isometric D&D, Foundry VTT is just the best. All right, so. Uh, no matter what, whenever I make one of these videos, someone asks the question, but what about this other tool? There's a bunch of other tools. These are the other ones that I, I hear a lot about right now in February, 2021. The, the next best VTT tool could be just out there, almost about to be released. So for all I know, opinions change uh, and there's something else that's better out there. But there's a whole bunch, it's a whole world of these tools. You have a lot more options than you did back in 2012 when Roll20 uh, did their Kickstarter and they were suddenly the best one out there by far. Um, so uh, I, I think that you should look at some of these other tools, um, but I, I don't have personal experience with a lot of them, at least not playing big, you know, multi-session D&D games and, and long running campaigns. But there might be another uh, way to do this. If you find that you would rather play in 3D uh, and uh, instead of 2D, you really like that 3D video game experience and all of your players have a computer that's capable of running sort of a, a Windows video game in 3D, not everybody has that type of computer. But if you find that all the people that you wanna play games with have that, you might even have more options because there's a, a growing set of more video game style 3D tabletop tools. Tailspire probably being the one that has the prettiest pictures, but some of them are just, you know, made in Unity and uh, Unreal Engine and released out. Some of them are free. Uh, so definitely check out some of the that growing world of 3D tools. I haven't plunged, taken the plunge into that world of 3D tools because some of the people I play with don't have gaming computers and don't plan on getting them. So I'm sticking with Foundry VTT, which works pretty well on their laptops, even though it's not a high powered laptop. So that's it. Uh, I switched to Foundry VTT, but you should use the one that's best for you. Uh, and if you wanna follow along with how I play D&D uh, online in isometric in Foundry VTT, 
check out any of the other videos on my channel and subscribe if you want to follow along. All right. Thanks, everybody.